uh, we are we are demonstrating the positioning of the patient for a shoulder arthroscopy and the surface marking and surface therapy. The position, as you can see, is a lateral position. We usually keep the patient in around 30 to 35 degrees of abduction, the head, and it little bit depends on the kind of the pathology that we are treating. If you want to do a rotator cuff pathology, you need to keep it around 35 degrees of flexion and about 10 to 15 degrees of anterior tilt. And if you are doing sort of a bank card pathology, you can just increase the abduction a little bit. And occasionally, you can also give you are treating an intra-articular pathology like a labral tear or bank card tear. You can give a lateral flexion as well to open the joint space. So the pathology will depend whether the positioning will depend whether you are doing a cuff pathology or a labral pathology. So for a cuff pathology, this position is perfect. You need to take it around 35 degrees of abduction and about 10 degrees of forward flexion. The second important thing is the position or the tilt of patient. You might have to tilt the patient slightly posteriorly to make the level. So ideally when you are doing a labral pathology, the glenoid should be parallel to the floor. So if you, for that you may have to tilt the patient a little bit posteriorly to actually achieve that angulation angle. Otherwise you will be like in a slanting position and your scope will be do, do, go, going in this direction. We, all, we want that if you are doing a Vanguard surgery, the scope should be parallel to the floor so that you get a good orientation with respect to the glenoid as well. So if you want the glenoid to be parallel. If your glenoid is not parallel, then you have to you have to make your entry portal in the angle of the glenoid version. So that is a very important thing. The, the tilt of the patient. If you are not able to achieve the tilt, then you have two options. You can either tilt the table, that is number one. And the second option you have is you can do a uh, uh, you can do a re, re portal and make the portal in the line or parallel to the glenoid practice. So now, as far as the portal is concerned and the start of the procedure is concerned, you have two techniques. One, you can dilate the shoulder with the saline. So you can use a 50 ml saline, put it into the joint, dilate it, and then put your portal. Or what is commonly used, what I commonly use is a straight direct technique. So we start the surgery with a P portal, that is a posterior portal. The posterior portal is about 3 to 4 centimeters from the posterior lateral edge of the acromion. So I just go through the surface marking. This is the acromion. You can see that this is the spine of the scapula. It goes to the acromion like this. And in this region, we have the acromioclavicular joint. So this is the acromion, which gives us an idea. Right here, in between, there is a tent, or you can feel it with your thumb. So this is a portal which is called as a nevasier portal, and this is useful in some conditions. Namely, you can use it for anchor insertion in the superior labral tears, so slab tears, you have to insert the anchors. When you are doing a suprascapular nerve release, this is a very important portal to release it. And occasionally this portal is very useful when you are doing a superior capsular reconstruction, you want to pull the grafts as well. So this is a nevasier portal. Now posterior to that is a portal which is called as a modified nevasier portal. This is more posterior and more lateral to the standard nevasier portal. And you can use your penetrating sort of devices from this portal to do your supraspinatus cuff repair surgery. So you want to pass the sutures through the supraspinatus portion. This modified nevasier portals work very well for you. It is about an inch lateral and posterior to the standard nevasier portal. Now, as I told you, this is the posterior portal and this is the women portal for most of the intra-articular surgeries like labrum. Now, posterior to that and slightly higher is a portal which is called as a high posterior middle portal. This is again a very good portal when you are doing a cuff repair for the infraspinatus portion. So you can use your penetrating suture grasper from this portal and do your infraspinatus tendon repairs. So this is a high posterior medial portal. Lower to that is a posterior lateral portal or a low posterior lateral portal. The posterior lateral portal is approximately here. You can make another portal which is called as a low posterior lateral portal which is just little lateral to this and which will be useful in the intra-articular pathologies like Vanguard. So this low posterior lateral portal, which is slightly lower than this, this is a site of the low posterior lateral portal. This portal is a very good portal for loose quality retrieval from the axillary pouch. 
to insert the anchors for the posterior labrum to do the passage of the sutures through the posterior labrum and occasionally you can do some kind of a posterior releases with them but the only thing is this portal is quite close to your axillary nerve and you should avoid making a full cannula or making a very wide portal so we recommend that if you are using a low posterior lateral portal you use it with a knife and dilate it with a artery and then use it and not not make a very big portal because this is the only portal which is slightly closer to the axillary nerve now comes the posterior lateral portal this is a usual portal that we use for the rotator cuff rotator cuff visualization so whenever we are doing it whenever you are doing it this posterior lateral portal is the portal which we use to uh, view our rotator cuff so this is a viewing portal in most of our rotator cuff repair surgeries now l is the lateral portal this can be little more or wide and occasionally some people can make two lateral portals as well and this is a main working portal when we are doing a rotator cuff repair surgery the w sign here what you can see is basically w sign here you see is the port of wilmington so this port of wilmington is a portal which we use to put the anchors for the slab so this is a port of wilmington and the exact position is about 1 cm medial and 1 cm posterior to the anterior lateral edge of the acromion now as far as the anterior part is concerned you make two portals anterior portal and the anterior superior portal for your labral work like banker tears and this usually is at the triangle like this so this usually is at the triangle marker so this usually is at the at the triangle so we make two portals the anterior portal and the anterior superior portal and these portals are actually at the ends of the triangle so they, if this is your triangle so this is the by uh, subscap this is the biceps so one portal will be here and one portal will be here so this portal two portals are at the edges of the triangle of the rotator interval so two portals anterior portal and anterior superior portal now occasionally we can use a portal which is called as a five o'clock portal and this is also called as a trans subscap portal for doing very inferior uh, anchor insertion now this portal goes through the subscap and again you don't have to put any cannula through it it is just a small portal and you can just put your anchors occasionally you want we want to put a portal which is little medial to it supposedly if you want to put medial port medial anchors on the glenoid if you are doing a double row repair so then it will be little medial but then you should be very aware of the coracoid and you should avoid making a por any portal which is medial to the coracoid in this particular position that is a lateral position there is one more portal which is described which is called as a sub clavicular portal and this is just beneath the clavicle and this again should be very very close to the clavicle it should not be towards the coracoid and this can be used to use uh, penetrators for anterior passage of the cuff okay so these are basically the portals which you should take care another important thing that you should take care is your axillary nerve is usually at about this level okay so about 5 cm to 6 cm down from the lateral end of the uh, clavicle or the acromion and you should avoid doing very low or going very low in this region when you are dissecting the tissues also then also you should be very much away from this particular region so these are the things that you should take care and the other thing is this is the acromion and any portal then usually you make in this area is pretty safe so this is a i i call it a zone of safety so any portal that you make here in this u shaped area is usually safe and you should not worry about the uh, things apart the only things you should worry is coracoid and going medially and here the low posterior lateral portal the lpl portal as well, as i was telling you it's little close to the axillary nerve rest of the all portal that i have told you is a very safe uh, location the good part of, or the good thing that you could inculcate among yourself is making the portal via outside in technique so always use a spinal needle to guide the portals before making it so you can make it on the surface marking but the final judgment is usually on the arthroscopic pro uh, process when you are going in so you will make one by one portal slowly so that's that is final needle that will guide you regarding the portals the another concept is you should not shy away from making number of portals so if you it's not that that if you make six portal or seven portals you are a bad surgeon if you, you are a good surgeon because as dr burkhard used to say that you should shoot straight so if you are not getting a proper trajectory from a particular 
portal then don't shy in making another portal to pro get a proper project in. this is for both for the visualization and for the working portal both okay any questions thank you